Hi folks, it's Rose. I'm here to do a video response to Bear Prepper's Country Grain Mill Contest. And what I'm doing is I'm going to share a recipe made all from preps. And this particular recipe is also good to make in advance because in, on its own it can be used as an emergency food. So let me share with you the ingredients that go into this. So the ingredients for this recipe, which will be down below, are basically quick oats. And I'm, I'm using my what I buy on a weekly basis rather than breaking into my storage. Protein powder, which is something I always have on hand and I recommend having on hand because protein is not always the easiest source of food to get. Sugar, one cup. Non-fat instant dry milk. Um, I'm happy to use packets because I found them on sale recently. But if you use non-fat instant dry milk that you buy in bulk, what you would use is the quantity that would be equivalent to make a quart of milk. And we need honey, your favorite kind. We're going to be putting water, hot water in here and melting the honey in it. I use chocolate chips in my recipe. You can use nuts, chips, dried fruit, whatever floats your boat as far as to make them yummy yummy. And the basic recipe does call for three and a half cups of quick oats. And you can substitute other recipe, other cereals. And that's what I'm going to do is what I'm going to make today. I'm going to use some quick oats, but I'm also going to use some of Bob's Red Mill five grain roll pot cereal, which unfortunately, that was my dogs running through, sorry. Um, unfortunately, my grocery store chain doesn't carry these anymore. They discontinued them, and when they did, I bought, I think, the seven bags they had on the shelf um, on clearance. This can be purchased online at Bob's Red Mill in a 25 pound bulk bag if you wanted to go for it. I really like it because it has flaxseed, as well as oats and three other grains. But that's, that's an option. You don't have to use this. I do it just because I like it and it's got the different grains in it. So you also need a large bowl. You'll need a cookie sheet and I'll show you that part of it when I get to it. A cookie sheet, parchment paper if you have it, and I also use wax paper just for ease of making the bars. So let me get started in mixing these items together. Alrighty, I'm going to start getting my ingredients in this bowl and I start with the dry ingredients. For my version, which is going to be the oats as well as the Bob's Red Mill, I use about a cup and a half of quick oats and I'm not an exact measurer. This recipe is very forgiving, so that's okay. On this one, I'm going to use about two cups, which works out well because then I have two cups left for my next batch in this particular size package, the one pound package. I have my sugar, one cup. And I have my instant non-fat dry milk, enough to make one quart of milk. So again, if you have that in bulk form, you follow your directions for making a quart of milk. Then I mix the dry ingredients together as best I can. I've not done with the dry ingredients yet, but I like to start this part here. because the protein powder is a very fine powder and it's harder to mix in. Now the amount of protein powder depends on what you buy. But what I'll tell you is this, is to use the equivalent of about 100 grams of protein. This is a 25 gram per scoop, so I'm going to four scoops. Balto wants to get in on the conversation. Four, so that's 100 grams of protein powder. Some of uh, these are only like 18 grams per scoop, so if it's 18 grams per scoop, you're going to use a little over five scoops. I 
the key is that you're going to get protein along with fiber as well as some sugar which some people can't have sugar and if you can't use your favorite substitute but otherwise our bodies do need some sugar so just mix your dry ingredients as best you can and about six ounces of chocolate chips I'll throw in now um, again I don't do this exactly I take my bag I fold it in half well, it's about half a bag, half a 12 ounce bag. Cut it open and wrap it in. I mostly learned to cook from uh, someone who was illiterate. My uh, grandmother came from Portugal, so I don't get all hung up on exact ingredients. But the list will be in the description box. If you feel you need to follow exact measurements, then by all means, you can do that. So I'll mix my chips in. Sometimes I end up with more chips than other times. Just kind of depends on the day when I'm making them. These make a great lunch. And it, as I said, they can also be prepared in advance and packaged for emergency, an emergency meal, basically. And it's got the equivalent of, one bar will have the equivalent of a meal's worth of protein. This batch makes 10 bars. So next I'm going to have to get about three quarters of a cup of hot water and mix in three tablespoons of honey. So I'll be right back. Okay, I have about three quarters of a cup of just very hot water from the tap. I learned by experience that heating the water on the stove to melt the honey in it and then pouring it in the bowl with the chocolate chips has a tendency to melt the chocolate chips. And I found that the hot water out of my tap is hot enough to dissolve the honey in the water. So it's two. And as you see, I'm just using a tablespoon from my silverware. I'm not a big fan of exact measurements, so it's, it's close enough. What the honey does is it helps as a preservative, for one, and it also helps as a binder. The non-fat instant dry milk acts as a binder as well and it also has protein in it. So once that's mixed together, you can see my honey's well mixed. Can't really see any clumps or anything. Here comes the fun part. <laughs> we need to add this and get all these dry ingredients moistened to a consistency that they will stick together. So I'm going to add most of this, but not all of it, and mix. Kind of quickly. Because the powder tends to grab the water really fast. And you end up with big clumps of powders, whether it be protein powder or your non-fat instant dry milk powder. And it's not that it's really a bad thing. They just taste better when they're a little more consistent and don't have big lumps. Keep pulling your dry ingredients from the bottom. Kind of mush them in. I don't know if you can see this too well. I hope so. What I'm going to do is keep mixing this. I like to use a really sharp spoon and cut along this edge to break up lumps and spread out the moisture. So I'll come back to you when I've got this mixed to a good consistency. Okay, I have a pretty good consistency now. You can see there's really no dry ingredients or very little still stuck to the bowl. 
and it has a tendency to clump, which is what you want. I'm glad I didn't add all of the water. If I had added all the water, it might have been a little too wet. And it would just require longer time in the oven to get to the consistency, the final consistency that I want my bars to be at. So this is a good consistency. If it's too dry and things aren't sticking together well, then you add more water. I guess alternatively you could add more oats, but I think it's easier to add more water. So now that you have this all mixed up, you're ready to go to the next step, which is making bars. And I found a really quick and easy way to do it just recently. And that's the way I'm going to show you how to do it. So hang on, I'll get set up for that. So, my bars have come out of the oven. I'm not sure if you can tell the difference from before, but they are slightly brown. And if I touch them, they're only just slightly crispy. And they have to be cooled down before you remove them from the pan. That will give them time to harden up a little bit and uh, they'll peel right off the parchment paper then. Right now they're still too soft. But when they're completely cool, they can be peeled off and wrapped up. I usually just wrap them in parchment paper and or wax paper and then put them into one giant like gallon size Ziploc baggie because I eat on these all week long. <laughs> but if you wanted to use them as an emergency food, you could wrap them individually as I said and uh, vacuum seal each one. Make sure you cook them to a pretty good crispiness before you do that. It'll preserve them longer. Add the lemon juice like I said. Uh, something you can do when you're using them as an emergency food say in a Ziploc bag, when you go to eat it, if you wanted to, if it's too hard or crunchy, and you have the ability to heat up some hot water, you know, if you're camping, you'd have a way to heat up some hot water on a fire, um, have your little camp bowl, break up one of these bars into the bowl and pour hot water over it. Wait a couple minutes and you will have a hot bowl of cereal. And again, like you have some chocolate chips in it, I love the chips or the nuts, or whatever kinds of things you like to put in it. You like granola, you can add granola. You can experiment with this recipe, which is what I love about it. Um, and yes, it is made from preps as well, so kind of win-win situation. So here's my cooled bars, and now they will peel right off and maintain their shape ready to be wrapped up and put away. So thank you Bear Pepper for doing this contest. Fingers crossed, I really would love to have that, that mill. Um, I do have a mill, but it's not one of the more expensive ones and I have a lot of wheat berries that I'm going to probably be grinding someday and uh, it would really nice, be nice to have the, the country living grain mill. And I hope you enjoyed the recipe, and I hope someone tries it, and um, let me know what you think about it. If you have questions, you can always comment below. Thank you.